it's always good to see you on a bright, shiny day like today. Uh, it's going to be hot today. It's going to rain tomorrow. So y'all hang on. It'll be all right. How many paid attention last week? <laughs> all right. I don't know if you recall, but Pastor Travis shared last week in Ephesians chapter 1. Because this month we're going through Ephesians. Now, if last week was chapter one, that makes this week. You guys are amazing. You know what next week will be? Chapter three. Like you could study ahead, couldn't you? I'm just saying. You could study ahead, couldn't you? Wait a minute, let's try it again. You could study ahead, couldn't you? You know what? Because if you're not if you're not studying somewhere, you're studying nowhere. I no no no. I study the whole word of God. Hello, Facebook. I just almost said a bad word. Let me just say with no. If you ain't studying somewhere, you're studying nowhere. So you could study chapter three. So that when Pastor Travis gets up to share chapter three, you could go, Amen. I saw that. I saw that. That's true, right? Isn't that what amen means? I saw that. Okay. We're in chapter 2 today. Last week, or yeah, last week, Pastor Travis shared finding refuge in him through Christ, right? Uh, today we're going to look at finding refuge in his grace. Amen. Scripture focus, you heard that earlier. For by grace you have been saved through faith. This is not of your own doing. It is a gift of God, Amen. not the result of works so that anyone may boast. A familiar text, actually part of the Romans road we learned so many years ago. By grace you are saved. I want to start at chapter 2, verse 1. You were dead. Let that sink in. You were were dead. Before Christ, you were dead. You wasn't in neutral. See, it's alive or dead. You were dead. The word says, through your trespasses and sin in which you once lived, following the course of this world, following the ruler of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work among those who are disobedient. You were dead. It's talking about spiritual death. You were, in, in definition, you were the walking dead. Yeah. Right? right? Like you were alive in the physical, but you were dead in the spirit. It also tells us that you were walking according to the world. That walking, that word, is to meander. It is to wander. Just, I love, I love, uh, I don't like potlucks, but I love, like, gatherings where there's lots of food. You know what I mean? Hey, man, we, we're not going to have one. <laughs> Like, like, a, like a cookout where everybody brings their own grill. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. And you can just go from grill to grill and go, what you got? Mm -hmm, that's good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You mind if I have one of these right here? Mm. And you could just meander through the parking lot, right? We had, a, we had a breakfast cookout a couple of years ago now, I guess. It's been a minute. And man, I ate so much. Never sat down. Just just went from spot to spot. What are you cooking? <laughs> Man, I grabbed I grabbed a, a sausage wrap and, and walked away with a sausage wrap and went to a burrito. Got that burrito when I'd finished the burrito and there was a burger over here. And you know what? I, I am a man of God. And I feel like that I don't want to leave anybody out. It was my duty Amen. to be gracious. And tell you how good your food was. Meander, walking according to the world, under the control of the enemy. Now, there's a song from my past. 
Some of you will remember it. I'm looking around. Many of us will remember it. You're going to have to serve somebody. Yes, indeed. You're going to have to serve somebody. Well, it might be the devil or it might be the Lord, but you're going to have to serve some. Remember that? You're going to have to serve somebody. Well, you thought, you thought that you was in neutral. You said, nah, 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 nah. I wasn't under the control of the enemy. I was doing it my way. I was just doing me. You, you know that little picture we see in the cartoons? You got the angel here and you got the devil here. And the angel over here is saying, brother, just do what's right. Amen. And the devil's saying, just do what you want. Just do what you want. Because you will indulge the flesh with our appetites and our attitudes. Indulging the flesh. That, that may come in, in drugs and alcohol. It may come in I don't know, kinky sex and quaaludes. <laughs> I wouldn't say amen. <laughs> yeah. We, we probably should just go ahead and pray. <laughs> Indulging the flesh. That's, that's that, that the enemy of God, that one who's controlling us or who was controlling us, all he said was, do what you want. Do what you want. You're not hurting nobody. Do what you want. The problem with that, and it comes in verse 3, all of us once lived among them in the passions of our flesh, that's each of us and all of us, following the desires of the flesh and senses, and we were by nature children of wrath, like everyone else, we were subject to the wrath of God. There's the problem. Subject to the wrath. Yeah, but I didn't know. Subject to the wrath of God. You were born in sin. The Adamic nature was in your mortal body. And you could not escape it except Christ. But God. The next verse says, but God. Who is rich in mercy out of the great love with which he loved us. But God. That's an amazing phrase. But God. Go back to Joseph. His, his brother sold him into captivity. He goes to Egypt. He's in jail. 20 years later, they come from the land that they were in to Egypt seeking help. And they encounter their brother. The word says that he said, come near to me. You see, we're going to look at that in a minute. Come near to me. And they saw that it was Joseph and they were afraid. And he said, what you did, you meant for bad, but God, but God. How many things in your life and my life have, were just, man, we were, we were surely going to die, but God, right? We were at the end of everything that was good, but God, who is rich in mercy. You, do you understand the difference in mercy and grace? Grace, God's reward at Christ's expense. Actually getting what you don't deserve. Mercy is not getting what you do deserve. That's mercy. And it comes into the ABCs of salvation. Man, I've got to hurry. First service, I was so late, but I'll get through this. The ABCs of salvation. To accept that he, Christ, the son of the living God, came as a baby, lived a perfect life, and died for you. Amen. Amen. Accepting that he did that. Yes. He came, accomplished all these things. <laughs> Number two, believing, B, believing that it is for me. Right? right? It is for me. Now, if you don't believe it was for you, we got a problem with step two. It's one thing to accept that he was God, accept that he did all these things, but if you don't believe he did it for you, no, yeah, he just did it for everybody. No, he didn't. He did it for you. Amen. For each of us and all of us. And third is to commit to walk in his way. Well, how do I do that? 
Show yourself approved. <coughs> Amen? Work out your salvation with fear and trembling. How are you going to do that? Show yourself approved. I don't know, by the reading of the Word. See, you see, next week, we're going to be preaching on Ephesians 3. You could maybe study that. It'd be the first time some of you have ever studied a text of Scripture. Amen or oh me. You could, man, if, we don't, if you don't get anything this year, we're going to tell you, you need to be studying the Word of God. Look at verse 5. Even when we were dead through our trespasses, he made us alive together in Christ. By grace, you have been saved. God has made you alive in his rich mercy and the great love by which he loves you. There's one thing we have some people that we meet with on Sunday night. And if they don't hear anything else, I want them to hear God loves you. Brothers and sisters, you need to hear God loves you. Why is that important? Because sometimes we don't feel lovable. Amen. God loves you. Yeah, but you don't know what I did. God loves you. Amen. You don't know where I've been. God loves you. You don't know what I'm doing. God loves you. Even now. <clears throat> Even in your sin. He raised us up with him, verse 6, and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus so that in the ages to come he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace and kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. First, God made us alive. Second, he seated us with Christ. I know you, you think or you realize that you are sitting here today, but I'm telling you that you are seated with him, Amen. with Christ, next to the right hand of the Father today. That's not, that's not in the here and after. That is in the here and now. As he has seated us with him in Christ Jesus. I want you to hear this. So that in the ages, plural, to come, he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace in kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. What does that mean? That means that not just today, but for eternity. It will take all of time and beyond time for his love for you to be measured. It is unending in the ages to come to display the mercy and grace that God has for you. You see, we talk about uh, the millennial in the thousand year reign. Yes, yeah, it's going to take all that time, but they ain't done yet. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout the victory. No, they're going to be talking about the mercy and the grace that God has poured out upon you and I. You see, that's all we got to talk about. We're going to celebrate how good he was to us. You get to verse 8. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this not of your own doing. It is a gift of God. Why is this important? Because this takes away all of the works. I'm going to read to you out of Matthew 25, verses 34 through 36. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my father, take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger. You invited me in. I needed clothes and you closed me. I was sick. You looked after me. I was in prison. You came to see me. There is a social gospel out there right now that says if you will do these things, he will love you. When did God start loving you? Before the beginning of time. Before the beginning of time. In our Wake Up in the Word study, we're doing Jeremiah right now. Jeremiah said, oh, God, I can't do it. Can't do it. And he said, you know what, before you were even conceived, before you was a twinkle in your daddy's eye, before the beginning of time, he loved us. You can't work for his love. Now, if you are by grace, these works will be established in you. 
But you do it, you know, if you, if you read the rest of that in chapter, or Matthew 25, you're going to find they said, when we do that, he said, oh, you wasn't paying attention. You see, when you did for the least of these, you did unto me. You see, when you, when you love that unlovable brother, when you love that unlovable sister, mm -hmm. neighbor, yeah, enemy, mm. ex, mm. Mm. in law, in law. Oh, Lord, Lord, you're taking it too far. There's only so much one man can do. When you've done unto the least of these, you would have done it unto me. For by grace you have been saved through faith. This is not of your own doing. It's a gift of God. Not the result of works so that anyone can boast. It is a gift of God. What is a gift of God? Grace. Not great, or not faith. Love. Grace. It doesn't say by faith you were saved. It's by grace you were saved through faith. You see, we were each given the measure of faith. How much is that? Enough. I don't know how much it is. I just know that we all get a measure of faith. Right? Sufficient that grace might be established. By grace we are saved. It says it is a gift of God. Grace is the gift of God. Not a result of works so that anyone can boast. Verse 10, for we are what he has made us. Yours might say creation. Somebody, somebody, somebody's got to translate. What do they say right there? Mine says masterpiece. Yeah. Masterpiece. Masterpiece. The word there actually is poem. It's the word that we get poem from. It's the creative nature of God. For you are what he has made, created in Christ Jesus, not for Christ Jesus, in Christ Jesus, for good works, which God prepared before to be our way of life. Created in Christ Jesus, for good works. We have trouble with that. We go to James chapter 2. Show me your faith without deeds, and I will show you my faith by my deeds. In other words, works comes after faith. Amen. Works comes after grace. Works doesn't get you to heaven. Lack of works won't keep you out of heaven. I'll tell you what, if I could just, if I could just read my Bible more and pray more, then God would love me. All right. Good luck. He loves you right now. In, in your sin sick state, He loves you now. Verse 11, I got to hurry. So then remember that at one time you Gentiles by birth called the uncircumcised by those who were called the circumcised, a physical circumcision made in the flesh by human hands. This is talking about the covenant of Abraham, the separation where God set apart his people. Romans 9 speaks to this. Romans 9 verse 45 says, Theirs is the adoption as sons. Theirs the divine glory. Speaking of the Jews, of the Hebrews. The covenants. The receiving of the law. The temple worship. The promises. Theirs are the patriarchs. And from them is traced the human ancestry of Christ, who is God over all, forever praised. Theirs, the circumcised. You, remember that you were the Gentiles of birth, the uncircumcised, called by. Look at verse 12 again. Remember that you were at that time without Christ being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers to the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God. He's saying you've got to remember you were dead. You were aliens. You were strangers. You had no hope. You were without God. That word without God is the word that we get atheist from. 
That's who you and I were. And except for Jesus, that's who we'd still be. Verse 13. But now in Christ Jesus, you who once were afar off have been brought near. Who was afar off? We were. Those of us who were dead, you who were afar off have now been brought near. Again, it goes back to what Joseph said. Joseph said to his brothers, come near to me. You see, once they got up close to him, they could see who he was. You and I were afar off, but he brings us closer every day. Get on my soapbox there, but I won't. But now in Christ Jesus, you who once were afar off have been brought near by the blood of Jesus. For he is our peace in his flesh. He has made both into one both groups into one and has broken down the dividing wall that is the hostility between us. Do you know this dividing wall? I'm going to say this to you and I'm going to prove it to you in a second. It's not between Jew and Gentile. Uh, let me read it again. For he is our peace. In his flesh he has made both groups into one and has broken down the dividing wall, that is, the hostility between us. Move down to verse 16. And might reconcile both groups to God in one body through the Christ, thus putting to death that hostility through it. The hostility was between God and man. It wasn't between men. It wasn't between the Baptist and the Nazarene, the Church of Christ and the Catholics. It wasn't between the black and the white, the man and the woman. It wasn't between the Jew and the Gentile. It was a wall that had been put up that separated you and I because we were dead. <laughs> we were dead. You ever been around a dead body? We have, right? Man, ugh, I hate that, I hate that. I hate that. I went some years ago. Uh, we went to a funeral and we were there for three days and oh, after every meal we had to go to the funeral home. I was like, oh, please just bury this person. Make this be over. And they would go and they would sit and they would linger. And it just got weird for me. Man, I, maybe, maybe you're, you do you, okay? But that was creepy for me. I, did, I don't like to be around dead bodies. Sorry. Well, here's what I know about God. If we're dead, we're not in his presence. That's right. Except that he break down that wall. How is that wall broken down? It's broken down through Christ. I want to back up to 15. He has abolished the law with his commandments and ordinances that he might create in himself one new humanity in place of the two, thus making peace. One humanity in agreement in community with God. One humanity alive through Christ. That that hostility is broken down. Look down to verse 17. So he came and proclaimed peace to you who were afar off. And peace to those who were near. That's Gentile and Jew. For through him both of us have been, have access in one spirit to the Father. Do you understand that the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in you. The same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in me, in each of us and all of us. That is the one spirit that unifies us, the one thing we have in common. You ever been out sometime talking and minding your own business? I, I, I'm, I have trouble doing that. <laughs> if I'm in a public, dude, I, I am that old man that sees somebody and I'm like, hey, so what's your name? I, and I try not to. I just can't not do that. But it's good when you get up there and you, and you talk to somebody and, and, man, you know, you know that you are of one faith. Amen. You talk to them and you're like, that dude's a believer. You recognize it. 
Man, your spirit bears witness. And so it ain't long you say, so a uh, few church? Yeah, we go over to Yehu over here. Oh, good man, I've heard good things about that church. So how y'all doing? And you come into community because we are in one spirit to the Father. Verse 19, so then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are citizens with the saints and also members of the household of God built upon the foundation of the apostles and the prophets with Christ Jesus himself as a cornerstone. I want you to imagine this. I want you to imagine that you're going to explain God to me. And you're going to do it on a board, a whiteboard, and you have a marker. It's Pictionary. And you're going to start, and you're going to start drawing. Y'all ever watch a um, Bible Project? Oh, dude. YouTube, Bible Project. You've got to do that. Pick a book. And he'll take the whole book, and he'll draw pictures. But see, you're going to start up in this corner, and you're going to start writing about Jesus. Right? And you're going to start, you're going to start in Genesis. And you're going to start telling the story. Well, wait. Go down here to the bottom corner because that's where you're going to finish. And the answer is Jesus. And as you draw out the picture, if you study the word, as you go through the word, you're going to find out the answer is always Jesus. That's always going to be the final line. Built upon the foundation of the apostles, the apostles and the prophets. You see, if you go through the prophets, if you go through the Torah, if you go through the Psalms and you go through the Proverbs, you're going to find that, find that the answer is always Jesus. You get into the Gospels. You get into the Epistles. You get into Revelation. You're going to find that the answer is always Jesus. Draw a picture. And you're going to find that the answer is always Jesus. Now, 21. In Him, the whole structure is joined together and grows into a holy temple in the Lord in whom... You also were built together spiritually into a dwelling place of God. You must remember that you and we, together and individually, we are the temple of God. Right? We are the temple of God. We are stones rightly fit in the wall of the temple. We are the colored thread in the tapestry, which is the kingdom of God. You, my friends, are the temple of God. And why is that important? Because first, God needs a place where he can be worshipped. We come together as one and worship. Amen? Amen? How can you worship alone? You're the temple of God. He needs a place where he will be worshipped. But he also needs a place where he can occupy. That's right. Mm. That's important. You didn't get it. He needs a place that he can occupy. You see, when you're out, you're out and about, when you're meandering, when you're the old man glad-handing, right? God needs a place where he can go, hey, 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 little brother, hey, come here. I need you to go talk to them. They're having a bad day. And the worship and the declaration of God is suddenly demonstrated. The presence of God has house with which he can abide. Oh, I know he, he, he occupies the whole world. I get that. But how will they know except that someone tell them? Right. right? How will they know when you come across that brother that doesn't feel lovable? And you say, I'm going to tell you one thing I know. He loves you. You come across that sister that's made decisions that she ain't proud of. One thing I know, he loves you. You got that parent and the kids are going to jail. One thing I know, he loves you. You got that kid going to jail. One thing I know, he loves you. As we become the praise and the presence of a creating, loving God. We've already claimed that we know him. But today I ask you the question, are you finding refuge in his grace? His grace that was full and free? His grace because of his great mercy? 
and the abounding love that He has loved you? Do you understand how much He loves you? I get overwhelmed if I think I, I, really, I literally have to keep my mind clear because it breaks me how much He loves me because I know me. Amen? Amen. And I can only imagine how bad you are. <laughs> I, I can only imagine. As bad as I am, oh God, help us all. <laughs> but when I think how much He loves me, the great love by which He loved you. Last thing. For we were dead, but God, who is rich in mercy, and out of the great love with which He loved us, has made us alive together in Christ. For by grace, we, each of us and all of us, have been saved. Amen. Stand with us. So remind me, who do we pray to? Who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, Lord, but deliver us from all evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Father God, we love you. Master, we stand before you as one body, desiring your presence, God seeking your favor, Master, so many ways selfish, but truly our desire is to be with you. God, to know you in ways, in new ways, in stronger ways, in deeper ways, in richer ways, in every way. So God, would you by your spirit grow us, make us the example that you desire us to be, make us the children, God, the, again, the example. Master, we thank you for it. We know that we can't do it in and of ourselves. So we put our trust in you, asking you, God, to accomplish all you have in mind. Truly let your kingdom come and your will be done in our lives today in agreement with heaven. So, Father God, would you bless and keep this your people. Cause your face to shine upon each of us and all of us. Be gracious to us, Lord. Let your countenance again be turned to us and the peace of God passes understanding be established in our lives, in our homes, in our families. We trust you to accomplish that. We come in the name of your Son, our Savior, Jesus. Amen. Amen. God bless you all.